Hi everyone, welcome back to Chops Garage. Today we're learning how to make friends and influence people. So, in my campaign for world domination of North Devon in the purchasing of trading cars, I stopped by a dealer and said, have you got any part exchanges that you might want to get rid of? It's always worth just stopping in places and asking. I know most places have an existing relationship, but it's always worth going and asking. So I stopped at a dealership in the local area and asked, um, did he have anything? Now I had popped in before and had a brief conversation. I thought I'd stop in a second time and he'd either tell me to get lost or I'd take things a bit further forward. Well, it turns out he just had something part exchanged and he was willing for me to have a go on it. Um, because it was a cheapy and he wasn't sure if his other chap would want it or not. So what we have is this fantastic, <laughs> he says fantastic, uh, 2006, Corsa SXI. In all fairness, it would be fantastic for someone, you know, as one of their first little runabouts and they'll probably actually love it to death. So I shouldn't laugh about it because I love the cheapies as much as anybody else. So the question is, is it worth having it for the price I've been offered? And that is the sum total of £300. Now, I will say it actually has an MOT, an existing MOT, which we'll have a look at. And um, we are going to get a chance to have a little drive of it. So um, let's go over it and see if we think it's worthwhile. I kind of want to buy it because I want to open that door to that relationship. And even if I can't make any money on the car, if I make it easy for the purchase to be done, um, nice and smooth, nice and easy, and let him understand that I really will take anything, then, you know, good things may follow. Now, remember, when you buy a car trade to trade, there is zero warranties. They can offload anything on you at all and there is zero comeback you would hope most places want to have an ongoing relationship especially in a local area and and not want to offload a car you but you never know what situation someone's in they might be desperate for cash so they might you know want you want to offload something on you very quickly but um i you know the business we're dealing with here has been around for a very long time locally very well known i've had lots of reports about this person uh, dealing with warranty claims in exactly the right way way and they do only sell cars that are about six years old or younger with under sort of 50,000 miles. The Theo model, I call it. <laughs> I wonder if he's watched this video. I'm sure he'll have something so bad if I say that. And the Theo model, which is supposed to be the easy life, isn't it? I, I think you have to have finance and you. it might take a little bit longer to sell cars. But they don't They don't ever retail these kind of things. They just they get sold on. So, yeah, let's have a look around and see if it's worth having or not. Now the first thing to do, even though it is a cheapy, is to double check that it hasn't got a nasty history on it. And as always, we're going to do that with Car Vertical. Again, at this kind of age, it probably isn't going to make a massive difference to the value, but you don't want somebody else to be telling you it. You want to know beforehand. So let's uh, run the reg a second. So what have we got? VX06 BKK. For any of you who don't know who Car Vertical is, and I can't believe you wouldn't by now, they are the largest online database of vehicle information. So if this has got something horrible behind it, then uh, we should find out. So let's hit that check, confirm. And let's see what it comes back with. Right, the report is in. Let's have a quick look and see what it comes back with. Mileage okay, theft okay accidents okay so that's good no finance i wouldn't have thought we would have by now uh spotted activity we can scroll through quickly and see any points of interest it'll have what it failed on mot's wise here any change of ownerships all that kind of thing if we scroll down try and find the uh last mot on it one second as i'm scrolling here i'm noticing a lot of stuff for tires but it seems to be the same ones year after year coil springs corroded tire and coil springs corroded, headlamp, headlamp aim low, coil springs again, tyres. So it does seem to be the same thing um, year after year. I mean, coil springs corroded, that's just the powder coating come off the coil spring and they get rusty. So you could just wire brush them down and paint them until they actually snap. It's not really an issue. Um, and then the latest one, let's have a little, what's the latest one? Uh, 2022 looks like it failed its MOT with the same coil springs mentioned as having rust near side exhaust system insecure uh, central front items removed so that'll be like a smelly on the um, rear view mirror 
Uh, oh, with the near side lower suspension arm ball detached, coal spring corroded, headlamp slightly defective. Well, we can see that's because they're oxidized. So that one probably is the one that did it. That's all oxidized. Um, so then it went back through its MOT by the looks of it. And uh, just says about the headlights again, about the coil springs being corroded, about the smelly being removed, but the thing for the lower arm has, has, uh, has come off of it. So by the looks of it, what we could do is wire brush the coil springs down, give them a lick of paint, and that would um, get you a, almost an advisory free MOT. I think the only thing you'd need to do then is buff the headlights. And it says windscreen damage. Let's have a quick look at that. Can we find out what that is? Oh yeah, little chip up there. Nothing to worry about. It just certainly doesn't need a new screen. So polish the headlights, spray up the springs, put it back for an MOT, and you'd only have one advisory, take, leave the smelly off there, and you'd only have the one advisory for the chip in the windscreen, which isn't bad really for a 2006 car. Nice mileage graph on a car vertical. Let's me see if the mileage has got any dodgy peaks and troughs, but that all looks nice and consistent. It stayed yeah, just a nice level consistent way all the way through uh, yeah it's all looking good on that front I'll quick scroll down it gives you a value of these as well right okay so it's saying market value 885 when the seller's a company 1230 uh, 11.69 I think that's probably sounds a little bit low in this market I'd have thought with a fresh MOT on it 14.95 I'd have thought you'd get for 2006 quite comfortably in the current market so we're all good on that but let me show an example of why we do these checks so this BMW 5 series is noted up for sale looking all shiny and new but a quick car vertical check caught that actually it's been in an accident it was okay for mileage okay for theft and showing no finance but it had been an accident if we scroll down car vertical can actually tell us where the damage was as you can see, it was quite comprehensive with lots of parts of the vehicle damaged. If we scroll down further, we've actually got pictures from the salvage auction where the vehicle was sold off. And you can see it was quite extensive damage. We've got even the rear airbags have gone off on this one. The engine is going to have been damaged here. You can see that quite clearly. So this is something you absolutely would want to have known before you went and looked at this vehicle. So as always, I'm going to put a link in the description down below so you can get your car vertical check done with a nice discount. It's an essential check to do when buying a vehicle. And as you can see, it's got lots of other useful information as well. Make sure you don't get caught out when buying a car. If you recently bought one, it might be worth running a car vertical if you didn't beforehand, uh, just to check that you haven't been stung at all. That also gives us an idea of what we need to be looking for as we go around the car. So um, we've got scuff down here on the door. We've got to bear in mind this is going to be, you know, we just spoke about what the value of it might be, so let's not go crazy about what bodywork issues it might have. The wheels are scuffed up. It'd be a nice easy refurb because they've got a quite flat front to them. You could just run a sander over them, give them a lick of paint, and that tidy them right up. I say that a lot of that will buff out. Um, you have got a dent, but I wouldn't do anything about it. And then you could just put a touch of paint on the corner there. Again, we've got to think, you know, 1500 quid, someone's first time car little runabout I mean what do we say he's offering to me for 300 so it gives us about 1200 pound of playing so it's never going to be a highly profitable car the fixes that are done need to be free fixes and uh, just the safety essential ones you'd probably end up making on this after you did what you should do to it you've got to pay your VAT so remember if the margin is uh, what did I say uh, 1200 quid you'll pay 24 for tax uh, for VAT so you're going to be 540 in it to v with the VAT on top as well um, so where are we now we're down to like 800 quid then you got yeah you you probably if you did well you'd make 500 quid out of it if you did well you'd make 500 quid not much more than that possibly a bit less but the rest of the bodywork looks like it just needs a bit of a machine polish I don't know if someone tinted those or if that's factory yeah, the rest of it looks like a machine polish if you recolored that black machine polished the bodywork touched up those alloys did that little ding on that side we need a trim for this side so again you'd be dropping 30 40 quid and getting a piece of trim for there but that would tidy up polish the headlights i think overall i mean there was no mention on any of those mot's about surface corrosion on any of the underside of the car it was just the springs i wonder if we can show you what spring looks like it's one of those advisories that just frustrate me a bit because the car is old the fact that it's got surface rust on the springs isn't going to be the be all end of it. Let's have a quick look underneath here a second. 
you can probably get a look at it there and they're not actually that bad yeah wire brush it down and you get rid of that and it's worth doing because people like to see advisory free MOTs people worried when they see rust that it's going to be something more serious right so we've got 113,000 miles on the clock which you know for that mileage isn't too uh, for this age isn't too bad we've got half leather interior trim which isn't really bad again either to be honest I mean that bit of balm there would tidy that up wet clean of the seats and they'd come up quite nicely uh, could do with a gear lever trim set you can probably get it on eBay for about 25 pound that would lift the interior right up I don't know why I enjoy this so much these cheapies this is um much better than getting a car in that doesn't need a lot I just I can just see the potential for it coming up there's quite a nice little car for someone what we could do with a new set of floor mats that would tidy things up greatly but actually a bit of plastic clean on here headline is really good it come up nicely now obviously mechanicals is a big thing so let's check that out so Corsa 1.2 what we're looking for is timing chain rattle and overheating and also funny uh warning lights for oil seepage into the wiring loom they like the uh, oil to work its way up the wiring loom on these hopefully this video is going to help a few of you sort of uh, a lot of you have asked in the past for how do you go around the car and decide if it's a good car to buy or not so hopefully this is going to help you out so start the car up starts well not too much slight i'd say there's a slight slop in the timing chain nothing too much no big rattle nothing certainly you need to jump on and change straight away in my opinion again let's talk about the value of the car you know that is not slapping and rattling away it's a little bit on startup so i'd live with that completely could have been starter as well actually to be fair uh we're looking to see if it's going up and down on the idling or not see if there's an erratic idle um but that seems to be sitting quite nicely i we're going to run this up to we're going to leave this running the entire time we do the rest of the video we're going to leave this running with the window down and we're going to see what happens with the temperature of the car that'll give us a good idea of what's going on let's check if the blowers are working blowers are working really really important check this time of year because if someone can't clear their windscreen they're going to have big problems on it air conditioning i'm not even going to worry about whether that's cold or not if someone wants if it's not cold and someone wants to regas the air con at this price point they can go for it oh we've got books we've got books We've got quite a lot of paperwork in here. MOTs. Again, I'm not going to go crazy worrying about service history. No one's going to pay me that much more for this car due to a few service histories on it. You know, it could do with an oil filter change before it goes out anyway, I imagine. So, again, be realistic. I cannot provide someone with a as new Corsa for £1,500. This is the kind of car you just run it for as long as you can and hope it doesn't die on you. And get every penny you can out of it so I'll, I'll, i won't go for that right now it looks mostly like it's mot's it doesn't look like service history but we have got a manual in there so uh you know if you're feeling generous do an oil and filter change on it before it goes we'll have a look at what the, actually i will turn it off quickly while we have a look at the engine and i'll turn it back on again because i don't want to do it while it's running well let's just check the stereo is working <laughs> yeah stereo is working don't want to get a copyright infringement so i'll turn it straight down so stereo is working um put a little bluetooth adapter in your cigarette lighter there tune it into the stereo and you'll have bluetooth with it as well so that'll work quite well for someone electric windows are they working that one's working that one's down already your plum that one's working mirror we're missing the little bit for an adjustment of the mirror so something would have to be put in there or someone would need to find the switch Again, if it's cheap enough, that might be worth doing before resale, if you can find one, because it wouldn't take too long to swap it out. Right, engine bay. Now, one thing I do know he told me with this is that the wire has come off the handle down here for the engine bay, so I might have to get a tool to do this. So, two seconds, I'll try both hands. Let's get some grips on it. Like I say, so you'd have to factor in getting that done. Where is it? Second. There we go. Yes, yeah, so you'd have to factor getting in that part. I think probably this is probably broken, which may well come as part of this piece of trim. So you can see how it quickly, you know, 500 pound profit might sound good, but these 25 pounds here and 25 pounds there quickly eat into the margins. Unless you just left them a little clamp on there for, to pull down on. Things like that, you know, 
I do think they're acceptable as long as you point them out to someone. Engine bay looks a bit dirty. Looks like a fresh washer bottle over there. We've got oil here, but it looks like it's come from someone overfilling the oil cap or not putting the oil cap back correctly, maybe. Oil cap's good. There's no mayo on it. Any other oil else? We've got a bit down here. Looks like between the... Actually, it looks like... No, maybe someone's greased, uh, greased an arm in there or something because it's too high for being the rear main seal. So a little bit of oil here now. We've got a new auxiliary belt on it. That's a good idea. Gives us a good idea someone was running it um, and getting work done. Coolant's at the right level. Looks like a nice clear colour, which is one of two things. It's either just been topped up or it's been serviced. Oil colour. We'll have a quick look. Well, the oil's clean and at the right level. So, doesn't look like it's just been topped up, which obviously makes you a bit nervous. Let's start her up again. And when we start her up, I'll just leave the camera behind a second and we'll see what the smoke looks like on the back. Right, I'll watch that back a second. So that didn't seem to be a problem at all. I didn't see any smoke coming out there at all. So that looked okay on that front. So what we'll do now, like I say, is we will run it up and just let it sit there and see how it does um, when it's left sitting and running temperature wise and take it for now. I think what we'll do is take it for a quick spin first and then we'll do that. And then I can come back to you and let you know how it goes. Right, a little bump around the car park. Clutch is okay. In the middle, gear change. Pushings feel a little bit woolly, but that's just the age of the vehicle, 113,000 miles. Steers nicely. Whee. No knocks or clunks from the steering in full lock. That's all right. How he brakes wise. A bit of graunchiness in terms of pads on disc, but that might be because it's been sitting. Might be worth driving around a bit and trying to work that off. Get into a few more gears. Third. That's fifth, sorry. Third. Fourth. Fifth. All seems all right. Yeah, I say it might be worth stripping the brakes down, giving them a clean, so you've got a bit of labour there and possibly some more parts. So again, that 500 pounds shrinking quickly. If you're going to go that far with it, it breaks straight and it breaks well. It's just a bit of graunchiness to it. Come off the. So we'll go around the sort of less finished surface. And this is a knot, there's a ridge up here between the tarmac. So we get a clunk. Not too bad. This sounds like there's a little bit of play in some track rod ends. But it's past the MOT with them. So again, I don't think you'd want to do that. Reverse is all good. Any hesitations in acceleration? No. Accelerate smoothly. Right, so we'll leave it running now for about 20 minutes or so. We've got up to quarter temperature so far, so let's leave it. But see, it should get to about, it should get to half temp and um, then stay at half temp. We should hear the fan kicking in. Anything else, we might have problems. Well, the car's been sitting for a good deal longer than 20 minutes because I got distracted, <laughs> went off and did something and forgot I had it running. So we'll have a little look, see how we're doing. Pretty much bang on half temp. I have heard the fan kick in, so that's working. So I'm happy that it's not overheating. What we'll do is we'll just turn it off and have a quick look at the coolant bottle and see if there's been any loss of coolant in the time it's been running. 
obviously won't undo the cap because we would burn ourselves. Looks to be at the same level. So, <clears throat> seems to run all right. Hmm, so yeah, it seems to be a good little runner. Like I say, I think there's a slight, slight bit of chain rattle when it starts minor, but you certainly wouldn't do it at this point. I've had them with bad chains and it's a lot worse than that. It looks like it could clean up quite nicely. It looks like it could nickel and dime you to death. So we get a bit of pen and paper and, and jot the numbers out and see where we'd be on it. So I thought it'd be better to put it on a quick Excel, work out exactly what we'd make out of this car. So course of 300 quid, it cost me 40 quid to have it dropped off because otherwise I had to go over and get uh, drop, uh, have someone come pick me up, take me over, drive it back again. And I'd have to pay for their time anyway. So uh, transport was 40 quid to get it dropped off to me. Stone chip to do the... Um, springs so we can get it back from the MOT and get that advisory gone let's say a tenner wheel paint a tenner arch 15 quid i found on ebay put the bluetooth adapter in i think that's going to be a good selling point that's a tenner floor mats eight quid oil and filter 20 handbrake lever 15 i found the bonnet um sorry the handbrake gaiters to i found a set for 15 quid to replace those worn gaiters uh, bonnet handle 15 quid I found used on eBay brake clean down. I'm going to assume an hour's labor I won't do that myself brakes are a um, You know something you want a professional doing so let's say the guys charge me an hour's labor to clean the breakdowns so That's assuming it doesn't need any parts if it needs parts obviously that goes up um, Mirror button I for the adjustable mirror I found for tenor MOT 40 quid adverts 50 polishes tenor um, Contribution to overheads every car's got to contribute to the overheads of the unit uh, electricity power all that kind of stuff warranty with warranty wise isn't going to cover an awful lot but it covers me against the biggest the biggest problems like for example if one of those springs did break and needed replacing so you could look at it and say uh, i mean the sale price according to is about 12.95 i think you might get a little bit more from it but that's a lot of people commented when they saw it on tiktok it'd be about 12.95 so let's use that figure let's say i put it up for 14 14.95 i might get knocked down anyway so between a lot of people think this is how the industry works it costs 12.95 i sell it for 12.95 i bought it for 300 quid i've made boom 995 pounds but that's not the case at all add all those bits in to get this car retail ready because don't forget if you just left the car as it is is effectively private sale and private sale price is about 880 quid so do all those things there could obviously be miscellaneous costs that are missed along the way there um we and you're up to £783. But being VAT registered as a proper trader, I have to pay VAT on the gross profit, not the net profit. I can't take £793 off. I've got to take the £300 off. I've got to pay it on the gross profit. So just in case anybody doesn't know the difference between the two things, gross profit is literally what I sell the car for versus what I bought it for. Net profit is the true profit after all the other costs. So um, I've got to pay the VAT man on the gross profit the nine the uh, 1200 and um sorry 995 pounds i've got to pay so i've got to pay 165 pounds to the vat man on the sale of that car i might from all this get a little bit back but i wouldn't have thought it'd be about more than 50 quid there's no vat on um mot's and the rest of these will be twos and three pounds on the vat so the actual net profit is 346 pounds 17 now some people say oh yeah we've got to pay tax on that too which is true you pay a basic rate of income tax of say 20 percent you're going to pay £69 on that, and your true net is £276.93. So from a £1,295 sale, that's your true net. Now, that isn't really a true net, because as we know, also, if the car goes out and it has a problem within the first 30 days, they can either bring the car back or we have to fix it. Up to six months, they could make a claim. I'd have to prove that it was fair wear and tear or it didn't exist on the car before, which I'm probably not going to win that argument. Um, so I might have to throw another 100, 150 quid in doing other bits and bobs. So what that tells me with this car is, as nice as it is, it doesn't really merit me spending any time on it. And that's why you see on this channel, um, cars being pushed into the corner, left to deal with later on. You could probably get all of this done in a day um, in terms of what you did yourself cleaning these springs down and stone chipping and all that kind of stuff obviously when it goes in for mot you, you you don't really know the score now your other option is you could sell it with the existing mot on it with the existing advisories on it and literally just give it a polish put the piece of trim on the wheel arch and leave everything else but then i reckon you're probably down to selling it for 900 pounds so your margins will probably end up being the same either way so comment down below does all this make sense <laughs> so 
it's a nice little runabout it it's but it doesn't really merit me spending my time on it the risk versus the reward isn't too bad so it can get pushed in the corner if i fancy earning a day's wage sometime i can crack on on it if in between someone comes along offers me you know you imagine if someone came along now and offered me 500 quid for it um i'd pay a bit of vat on the difference but i wouldn't touch the car so if someone just bought it spares and repair for 500 pounds and i paid a bit of it i marked up by 200 quid and paid a bit of vat on it you know i could make you know not far off the same profit without touching the car so you again you can see why cars get like this pushed to the side and just sold off spares and repair but I mean, if you're trading from home it could be a good little flip you know again you could work on it in a weekend and probably earn yourself a good day's wage out of it so i have done a deal i bought the corsa for the 300 pounds from the chap and like i said that opens up the door to a new relationship which should bring greater rewards based on the numbers there's a small profit to be made on it. It won't be a priority for me to do it. I've got lots of other cars that have potentially bigger margins in them that need prepping first. So it will park up in the line here. It may well be someone comes along and decides to buy it as a project as it is in between. If they don't, by the time I get round to it, it shouldn't take too long to get ready. Um, but like I say, there are other priorities at the moment. But yeah, if either way, I'm sure it'll work out. Like I say, the biggest thing is opening up a new relationship with a new dealer with potential other part exchanges. It could be that's the only one I ever get. It could be it starts to get some really good offers, but at least he knows I buy them nice and quickly, no hassle, and um, come and pick them up quickly as well. So I'm a good source to go to if he needs to get shop stuff, even if it's a bit older and a little bit run down. Anyway, Thanks for watching as always, massively appreciated. Don't forget you've got that link in the description down below to get a discount on your own car vertical checks. Like I say, can't stress enough, really important check to do if you're buying cars or even if you bought one and you didn't check it out at the time, better than no. Anyway, thanks again, catch you again soon.